It's been absolutely fascinating working with everyone, actually, because everyone's from all sorts of different dance styles, like completely different um, disciplines. Um, it's really interesting actually seeing the way that each kind of style, the way that each dancer is trained. So um, like the mentality is different, everything, the way they warm up, the way they focus, the way they are able to, um, what's the word, to choreograph, to freestyle. Freestanding is not something that's very um, particular in ballet. You're usually given your steps by a choreographer and then you, um, I think the mark of a great ballet dancer is, is taking those steps and making them your own, making them better, making them come alive. Um, but for a lot of the other dance styles that I've been watching over the last few months, it's very much, um, they create their own steps as they go along and that's been amazing to watch. You know, they just hear some music and they just start moving. She's taken on this journey by these other cats she has to quickly decide whether she trusts them, um, whether she wants to go on this journey. Um, and I think there's a real turning point in the film where she actually realizes that this might be where she's always meant to be, actually, um, which is quite a beautiful moment. It's been very, very surreal for someone who doesn't sing, um, you know, has never sung in public, really, apart from at school or at church <laughs> to um, suddenly be singing to um, Jennifer Hudson, um, singing with her for a few bars and um, also to have a song created for them by Taylor Swift and also to have that song sung to them for the first time by Taylor Swift. <laughs> that was a very surreal day, um, but it's just been phenomenal to hear, you know, the talent that they have and also Taylor's to, to, to witness Taylor's ability to actually write a song, like lyrics and, and the melody, and to be in the same room as Andrew Lloyd Webber, working with him, being coached by him, um, watching him on the piano, everything, it's just been extraordinary. Beautiful Ghosts is, um, is a song that Victoria sings to Grizabella. Um, I think it starts prompted by seeing a private moment of Grizabella, um, sort of, upset and hurt by the other cats and the way they treated her um, and I think it's Victoria's way again of trying to connect with her and pull her out of her pain and misery and um, there's a lovely turn in the song where actually Victoria finds strength in what she's kind of singing to Grizabella makes her realize it for herself as well um, and she sees the light and the hope and and the beauty of what she's just found with all these new cats and the friendship she could have um, so he's trying to entice Grizabella back to happier days. <laughs> Tom and I both felt at the beginning of the process when we were talking about my character that a Victoria should not be weak or come across as, you know, um, too helpless. You know, she needs help, but she is still very strong and she finds more and more strength as she goes through the film. So I think we've always been coming back to that idea with every scene and finding moments to find that together. My character, the first thing you'll notice about him is his eyes. He has like these incredibly bright green, emerald green eyes that, you know, really pierce and he has this scar. And he's a cat that's, you know, had a few wars. <laughs> he wears this huge sort of fur coat and a hat, but the fur coat's got like scratches and muck all over it. And he looks really sort of majestic, but he's, he's a tomcat. He's, he's, been a, he's been about. And, um, and he's a trickster, you know? He's sort of like charming one minute and then horribly desperate and insecure the next minute. Tom, you know, wanted to see me do something I'd never done before. He wanted to see me outside my comfort zone. Thanks, Tom. And, um, to be honest, you know, it's been amazing. Like, I've managed to sort of find a McCavity that I've not ever played in my whole entire life, like the kind of character he is. Look, you know, it's undeniable that this is one of the greatest musicals that's ever lived and ever been created. I think the film will not let it down. Um, I think that, um, you know, it, it will be a spectacle that audiences would just marvel at the technology of how, they, how we did it, at how the movement and the songs came together and the scale of the film. I think people would be like, whoa. I mean, I really do. The vision for the film is extraordinary. He's very, very clever, Andrew. 
and uh, I've really been an enormous admirer of his for a very long time. It's all right now, it's come full circle now. Yes, I was cast as Grisabella in 1981 and um, did all the rehearsals and then just before we opened, I um, snapped my Achilles tendon and uh, so I went off and had it stitched up. And so uh, we all went to see it, which is a very, very strange experience. Uh, and I thought that that was my history with cats, but it turns out not to be. Bella, at least for me, is a, a very heavy character from an actress standpoint. She's also kind of the heart of it all, of cats. Um, she carries the weight. Like she has the type of presence when she walks into the room, it changes the tone of the room. You feel her before you even see her. I would say Victoria, her character, it's like the light of it all. Like a young, new, innocent cat or kitten, maybe even. And that came with a certain light and air that I felt like connected to Grizabella, although she was kind of on the outskirts as well, but she still had a chance. In some way, it was like a common denominator between Victoria and Grizabella. Francesca Hayward lights up the screen. Like, it's even in her presence and then the way she moves. I remember the first day I got to see her dance on set. Before all our scenes, you know, it was light. But then I swear it's as if she started flying <laughs> across the set. It was beautiful um, to just witness and, and then to see her sing. Because uh, let's not forget, it's every form of art in this project. So, like, I'm a singer and then an actress and not a dancer. And then you have dancers who are not necessarily singers, and they have to sing. Luckily, Grisabella didn't have to, though. <laughs> but um, to see Francesca sing, and that's not necessarily her comfort zone, but it was so beautifully done and so necessary for the character. And to see her stretch herself in that way, it was just like amazing to it to witness. It's like living life through a cat's perspective, which was so fun. And every time we would go to a new set, all of us turned into children because it was, it was that exciting because we're now tiny. The kitchen shelf is like 30 feet high. <laughs> and it's like, are you serious? So a rocking chair is enormous. When I first heard I, I, I was going to be in Cats, whoo! I instantly, I felt the pressures of Grisabella on my shoulders, like, oh, wait, me is Grisabella? Wait, I get to sing memory? And then to learn of her journey and what she represents in this story, the weight that comes along with it, that's daunting, scary. I think I've seen most of Andrew's um, musicals live, and I mean, he's obviously a musical genius um, and a musical theatre god. And yeah, so when um, Cats became a movie, obviously I, I jumped at the chance. He came on set yesterday and like, I kind of get a bit nervous. Out of anybody here, he's probably the one that I get the most nervous and probably embarrassing around. I'm like, Andrew, hi. Or are you supposed to say like, Lord Lloyd Webber. Um, when you meet him, I don't know, I get really nervous around him. Um, and singing in front of him for the first time was, um, crazy. I love doing vocal training because um, I only get to do it when I'm doing like a singing movie and I just find it really really fun because your voice does really improve by doing exercises like that um, and it's yeah it's just Fiona's just the best at it she's so nice and um, and it can be really intimidating singing live and there's so many amazing singers on the film and you know you've got to get up there in front of all of them and uh, and sing your number and but I felt like really well prepared this movie is going to be spectacular and um, and personally I mean I'd be first in line to buy a ticket if I was in it or not uh, just the cast is incredible from Dame Judi Dench 
legend, legend of the game, um, uh, Sir Ian McKellen, um, James Corden, Idris Elba. We were all just in a scene yesterday and Taylor Swift. Um, there's so, so many talented, gorgeous, beautiful people in the film. I play Buster for Jones, who is a big, fat cat of St. James. He's very posh. He loves a damn good time. And he really, really enjoys his food. And his place in the, uh, the Meow Club, I think, is that he is that I think we've all met somebody like Buster for Jones. I, I, like, I, I, he, he, just, I, he represents so many different people that I've met in my life where you're kind of drawn to them, their, their confidence, their sort of elaborate nature. The thing that I think is the most exciting thing and could really only be done by a director like Tom Hooper, I think, is that he understands the spectacle of cats and the spectacle of cats, so much of that is about dance and performance. What he wants to do is try and make the truest version to what Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice always wanted to do, which was take T.S. Eliot's poems and make a wildly theatrical story about them. It's all crazy. We're all going, we're going to take a load of people and they're going to pretend to be cats. And they're going to, like, if you just say it out loud, it's bonkers. But that's kind of, I think, where the most fun happens, really, you know? That I think it's completely original. There is nothing else like it. And there never, ever will be. That, I think, ultimately, is the is the thing that, that, that has propelled it for so many years around the world. Like it's never not been a hit in any country that it's opened in. Because I think people want to watch something that's completely original. <laughs>